Hello everybody, welcome back. For I am Blue Streak Spider Furry 4 and welcome to this evening's streaming of Broken Sword. The first one, the Shadow of the Templars. So of course I am, as I've already said, Blue Streak Spider Furry 4. I hope you guys are having a lovely evening slash morning. So let us swing back into here. Hi there, welcome again. So we have just completed Broken Sword 2. We went through it, I know we went through that first, originally through the main playthroughs on the channel. But that being said, we are going to open the doorway for the next scenario. Yeah, whoops, that, whoops, that was a mistake. Whoops, clumsy me! Like an ease my moment there. We... I was trying to get more of... Keep forgetting the buttons. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to make sure that we're on the live section here. That's it. <clears throat> so we are going to, like I said, jump into... Broken Sword 1. So this is not the director's cut. This is the default, original. So, if we give it the game a little moment, please streamlabs, behave yourself. Okay, am I even getting into my menu? No, oh, come here. Ah. Thank you. So, let us transition. Oh, you can hear the music. Hang on. That is quite loud, I think, for the... How's that? So let's... Let's transition to Broken Sword 1. Oop. Well, we don't want to see this menu, but I'm getting a bit... But let's try this now. Let's see how... Let's see if we can get into it here. Let's see. How's my camera looking? Everything looking smooth enough? Yeah, it looks... And the game audio... It's a... Yeah, I guess it's okay. So, this is the first game. I mean, we can hear that okay, right? You guys can hear that alright? Yes, we can. So, that being said, I think we are on safe terms to start this game. So, we've completed the second one. So, hallelujah! So, this is Broken Sword, the Shadows of the, the Templars. Very shadowy, shadowy dudes. So, let us sit into it. Let us begin. Paris in the fall. I don't the remember much the about... Year and the end of the millennium. The okay. city holds many memories for me, of cafes, of music, of love, and of death. <laughs> revolution! El Rube Revolution! Virgins! <laughs> Charles Cecile Dave Cummins Jonathan Howard at the door Sakura <laughs> James Long I don't know. You have to come up with some of the funny names, right? Stevens! What's the background like? That crow is getting really, really far. Me. Composed by Barrington. 
got Crow still going. Hey, copy now. Mr. Sturbart? Oh. Hello there. Hello there. Another. Uh. Oh, it's a clown. I don't like clowns. I don't like clowns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a bomb with a clown. Oh, Korean, yeah. Oh. Ah, Pisto. Whoa. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. I am the power. Hmm? Oh man. Yeah. George, you're not happy, are you? As I picked myself up, all I could hear was the ceaseless drone of traffic. Life went on around me. But the explosion was to change my life forever. Yeah, so great way to start. Okay. Do we have any? View the settings? Or do we have to press escape for that? Ah everything's fine there. Speech could be can be increased. Yeah, we want to hear. Yeah, we've got the text. Okay. Yeah, done. So. No, the no, table no. had been overturned by the explosion. This Wrapped there. around the lamp post was a newspaper. Can we pick up the newspaper? Hmm. The leading article referred to the visit of a Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. That was the only news story. The rest was rumor, gossip, and sensationalism. Then I noticed the writing at the foot of the page. It read Salah Eddin, 1345. Hmm. What about the... I yeah, contemplated what about crawling under the umbrella and pretending none yeah. of this had ever happened. <laughs> I don't want to play anymore. So... The blast had blown out the glass, leaving a gaping hole. Hell of an expense bill, wouldn't you think? Okay, so let's get started. In Broken Sword! With George Stobart, the main protagonist. It was the body of the old man. It was hard to believe I'd seen him alive only minutes before. He dead, bro. He he definitely dead. Ooh, you know he dead. I tried not to meet his stare as I searched the dead man's pockets. No wallet, no papers, no credit cards. The guy's past was a blank page. I'll see. Um, take a look at the a tequila. mysteriously undamaged body. Can we take a look at it? Take a look. I needed a stiff drink, but I hated the taste of brandy. The only thing to survive an explosion is the brandy, huh? The pretty young waitress was unconscious. Try and wake her up. Hello! Wake up! Wake up! Help her up! Yeah. Oh, there she goes. She's coming too. Oh. Oh, oh no. Oh my head. Never again. How much How vodka much did, did I drink? drink? Oh no, don't tell me. What is your name, Shelley? George Stobart, ma'am. Oh, American. She asked the question quite innocently, uh. but I could sense her reserve. Oh. It was something which seemed to afflict all your It seemed to be official. You all look like kids. you could use a little mm. help. I could use a little drink. I feel sick, dizzy, and bruised. <laughs> I don't even remember, don't even remember the, the party. party. Just relax and take it easy. You've been knocked out. You don't say. What happened? There's been an explosion. An explosion, yeah. Big you boom. should try not to move. 
Are you a doctor? Uh, no. No, but I used to play hospitals when I was a kid. <laughs> Can you remember anything at all? No. I need a drink. Pour me a brandy. Uh, my you could be wise. in shock. No alcohol. What about yeah. your man? Is he dead? Yeah, he's dead. Yes, he is. Oh, he's totally done. Mon Dieu! Mon Dieu! Yeah. Now help her. She didn't help respond. Her. If I wanted another cappuccino, I'd have to serve myself. <laughs> no service in this place, man. No fucking service. <laughs> I'm out of here. Goodbye. I said good day. <laughs> so, no cops. Nobody coming to check the explosion out. Nobody. Fine. Fine. Excuse me, Mr. Digger. Did you see? Did you see in here? Oh. Freeze! Whoa! Hold it! I got there. Oh, Dr. Don't Blue. Shoot. I'm innocent. I'm an American. Can't make up your mind. Huh? <laughs> I demand to see the American consul. Drop your weapons and get down on the ground. Put that thing away, Sergeant Blue. I Sergeant apologize, Blue. Monsieur, but I <laughs> cannot Blue. permit you to leave. Am I under arrest? Ah, uh, no. I would simply like to ask you some questions. Of course. En avant, to the cafe, march. What a mess. This bombing is an outrage, is it not? Stop that, yeah. monsieur. What? Stop holding your breath at once. <laughs> really? Has it occurred to you that he may be dead? Move. Yeah, we must look. Hear, but I prefer to look on the bright side. Besides, <laughs> I recall a case where the killer escaped by feigning death. <laughs> However, in this case, the man is quite dead. Clearly, Very the killer knew of his presence and... How many times have I warned you about premature extrapolation? All we know is that he is dead. It yeah. isn't reasonable to assume... A great detective assumes nothing. Take Maigret, for instance. But, but he, he was a fictitious character, monsieur. Why, he was no more real than Poirot or Tatin. That's Tatin. a different move. <laughs> they were comedy Belgians. <laughs> anyway, God. it is unlikely that even you will learn much from talking to the dead. Examine the a... girl and take her statement, if you can. This is really good. Stop holding your breath, madame. Hey, maintenant, to business. He's a very hard killer poirot about him, don't he? Your name, please? George Stobar. I'm from California. Here we come. And what brings you to Paris, Monsieur Stobart? Travel. I'm touring Europe. You chose well. The city is most beautiful at this time of year, no? With explosive romance, uh, but... Yeah, yeah, I guess so, apart from the bomb blasts. Were you in the vicinity of the cafe at the time of the explosion? Yeah, I was sitting out on the sidewalk. I was lucky I wasn't killed. The inspector passed over my remark with no reaction. Did you see the deceased enter the cafe? Yes, in the cutscene we yes, did. Yes, I did. Was he alone? Uh, yeah. Yes. And did he say anything to you? No. Mm, he was no. more interested in the waitress. Yeah. Did you see anyone else in the cafe? Yeah, we saw the clown. Yeah, there was a guy dressed as a clown. And it wasn't was Mark Hamill. An, an accordion? Yeah. He oh, played badly. The picture is forming in my mind, and it is not a pretty one. Guess he doesn't like clowns either. Is the girl all right, Moo? She'll leave. She confirms the American statement. A clown with an accordion, no doubt an elaborate and eccentric disguise. Very well. Eh bien, I have heard enough. What do you mean? I am satisfied that you know nothing. You may leave. 
I hope this little incident does not spoil the rest of your vacation. <laughs> what about Thanks, my man. personal safety? Can't you at least give me some advice? Stay away what from can copies. I say? Stay alert and look out for suspicious characters. And don't cross the road until the little man shows green. <laughs> Great advice. <laughs> I honestly believe you are in no danger, monsieur. Well, Should no. Should you remember no. anything of importance? Oh, Jesus please contact Christ. me. My cow. Oh. Boo, you are such a funny bastard. <laughs> don't cross the road until the little man goes green. Thanks. That is all. You may go. Oh, good God. Oh, There's man. not much to go on, monsieur. On the surface, no. But what lurks inside the subconscious? Ooh. If the door can only be opened. Are you serious, monsieur? I thought your interest in psychic detection was purely academic. Are you kidding? Academic? You are about to witness a scientific breakthrough. Yeah, we are totally leaving, because... Ah! So here is Nico. The girl presented a confident but sullen mask to the world. An expression more suited to the face of a delinquent youth. Excuse me, mademoiselle? Take a picture of George. Nice. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Oh. An American by the sound of it. Yeah, that's right. On holiday in Paris. Some holiday, huh? You were here when the bomb went off? Sure was. Sat right out front of the cafe. Did you notice a middle-aged man, maybe 60, with an hat and overcoat? I couldn't believe it. She hadn't even asked how I was feeling. Yeah, <laughs> he went inside just before the bomb exploded. You weren't related to him, were you? Oh, no, nothing like that. I am Nicole Collard from La Liberté. What's that, some kind of nightclub? Uh, no, it is a newspaper. You're a reporter? I'm a freelance photojournalist. Say, freelance. you can interview me about the bombing. You know, an eyewitness account. Minutes after the outrage that shook the whole of Paris. You know, real life drama, human interest, that kind of stuff. I'll just hmm. give you the facts, thank you. Did you see who planted the bomb? I know it sounds crazy, but he was dressed like a clown. Oh, God, it's him again. What do you mean? Uh. Have you met the clown before? It's a long story. I have plenty of time. I don't. <sighs> Aren't you? Wait. Look, the inspector gave me his card. Also. You know him? Oh yes, we've met. I didn't know his first name was Augustin. It suits him, I must say. She sounds very attracted to him. Rosso didn't blink when I told him about the clown. It's as if he already mm. knew. That is typical of a cold fish like Rosso. I've seen <laughs> cheeseburgers with more spunk. <laughs> Who's the guy you were supposed to meet? His name was Planter. I didn't know him, but he called Planter? me last okay. night. He said he had a story which would interest me. He asked me to meet him at the cafe. I guess I'll never know what he wanted to tell me. Well, not unless you have Rosso's gift for psychic interrogation. <sighs> Sounds a lamb stuff, right? How did Plantar get your name? Through the newspaper La Liberté. I'd written an article linking two unsolved murders. One in Italy, the other in Japan. The oh, yeah! cases were remarkably similar. A wealthy right. victim, no apparent motive, and a costumed killer. Planta said he could supply me with more information. Hmm, okay. Why won't you tell me about this clown? Why yeah. do you want to get involved? Because he almost killed me. Isn't that reason enough? I guess yeah. so. Listen, I'll give you my phone number. Hot dang, get a number. You help me with my story, and I'll let you in on what I know. And let's get one thing straight right now. This is strictly business. Okay, it's a deal. I have to go develop these pictures. I'll be on with you. Fine, I'll uh, see you soon. Okay, so. Take a look. This way? First. Check the alley.
It was a plastic crate. <laughs> I wonder, uh, hmm, something seems ominous about this place. It was a plastic crate. Yeah, okay, George. It was a battered old trash can. Oh, trash can. can. Hmm, it was a pipe. Can I clean up that? I took a deep breath and prepared to climb the drain pipe. For what purpose, but... I guess the clown <laughs> hadn't escaped over the rooftops. <laughs> Check. When it don't, you search the trash, right? Search the trash. Jesus! Catman. I'd had it with <laughs> sticking my nose into French trash cans. <laughs> I would too if a cat came out of it. Right, so... Obviously, we need someone to get into this manhole. I wanna go with sewers bra with turtles, man! I tried nope. to lift the cover with my fingers, but couldn't gain any leverage. Yeah, so... That's a no-go from there. Inspector <laughs> Moo! <laughs> what Moo? What a mook! <laughs> so! Let's see what this guy's saying. Hi, can you spare a few minutes? I thought you'd been arrested! No, it was a misunderstanding. When he pulled that gun, gah, I thought that was it. Those automatics spark quite a punch, you know? He made a mistake. Mm. He thought I was a terrorist. You? A terrorist? Ha! He was only doing his duty, I guess. Uh, Did you, you see, see a clown? clown come by this way? A clown? Like in a circus? Yeah, a clown with, with their beef. and a big red nose. Ho! Oh, those guys are funny, aren't they? Not no, in we my don't like experience. Them. Yeah. I love the circus, especially the horses. You haven't answered my question. Have you seen a clown? You think I've got time to watch everyone who passes by? Some of us have to work for a living. Look, I know you're busy, but surely you'd have noticed a clown. I told yeah. you already! I didn't see a thing! He was wearing multicolored baggy trousers and makeup. It'd be a poor sort of clown if he didn't. <laughs> Did you see an old guy with a briefcase? Wait, silly old coot. Do you know what he said to me? Work fascinates me, he says. I could watch it all day. Care did. I could have knocked this block off. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't want to mess with him there, like. Would you like to read my newspaper? Here, yeah, maybe I'll... I haven't got time to read that. You could read it on your lunch break. Ten minutes is all I get. And if my boss had his way, I wouldn't get that. Yeah, he that's hard condition. So I didn't have to stop to eat. Oh, take the newspaper and quit complaining. <laughs> Look at this! Damn bleeding out liberals! <laughs> Save the dolphins! Catch them and eat them, I say! All that fuss over a bunch of fish! Nah, that's more like it! Look at the size of those! Like champagne bottle corks, no? Ah, what's uh. this? Saleh Dean running in the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe. It's a racehorse? A horse? Uh. A legend! Bucephalus reborn, mon ami! Like a mon streak ami. of lightning she is! Mon ami! Mon ami! Mon ami! Well... Oh, he's gonna go! Okay. Do me a favor, won't you? Keep an eye on my hole! I'm off to put some money on that nag. Did it, lady? Did it, lady? Bye. Still there, dude. Don't mind if I steal your manhole opener, will you? I found just what I wanted a tool for lifting manhole covers. Seemed a bit obvious that's what we were here for. <laughs> Pick up the manhole cover to get into that old manhole. Man, what a hole! Hi. Hey. Right. Right. 
Right, so the inventory is at the top of the... Kawabunga! I lifted the cover to reveal what smelt like the entrance to a sewer. <laughs> Going down! Just don't fall. Just don't fall. <laughs> oh. I see the red nosed reindeer. Or should I say a red nosed clown? As I picked up the plastic ball, I realized it was intended to be worn. Exactly. It was the clown's red nose. The nose was hollow. Printed on the inside were the words La Risée du Monde, Paris. Mm -hmm. The card read Augustin Rosso and gave an address to the south of the Montparnasse Cemetery. Right. Okay, so forward and onwards, I guess. Oh, that cloth or whatever that is. Should have really want to pick that up? I scooped up the sodden tissue. Oh, right. It was cold and greasy. Oh. Like breakfast and leftovers. No. Ooh. No. Grief man. I took hold of the scrap of material and unsnagged it from the spike. It was the scrap of material I'd found in the sewer. It was the soggy tissue I'd found in the sewers. Alright, up we go. Hello? Hi there. Hold it right there, you. You sewer rat. <laughs> I knew you'd come back. And now I've got you. What are Wait. you talking about? You're trespassing. Come out of there immediately. That's what I'm trying to do. Give me your hand. Ha! You won't catch me with tricks like that. Back to the hell, I distance, guess. Monsieur. Okay, okay. Now, what were you looking for? Right. I was looking for a clown. Ha! Huh. Ridiculous. Do you really expect me to believe that? He planted a bomb in the cafe and blew it up. What? The cafe? Blown up? Mon yes. Dieu. That is awful. And yes. You say the person responsible was dressed as a clown? That's right. Mm -hmm. He blew up the cafe, escaped into the sewer, changed his clothes, and came up here. Ah, mon Dieu. And then, the man I chased. Do you think that man and the clown are... One and, One and the, the same. same. Well, yes, it had crossed my mind. Ah, that still does not explain what you are doing down the sewer. For all I know, you are in league with him. Oh no, I'm just a tourist. <laughs> <laughs> Most tourists are content with the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, or the Pigalle. I didn't realize my waste pipes were such an attraction. You know, it's a flushing uh, innovation. Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? Well, I, I didn't notice. Uh, now are you going to leave? Or do I have to call the police? Show him the Perhaps card. Perhaps you'd like to take a look at my card? Mm -hmm. What is this? Inspector Augustin Rosso? What does that say? Mm. Hominoid Division? A homicide. I think the ink's smudged. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are not a tourist. Okay, I'm not. I lied to you. And I'm sorry. Don't apologize, monsieur. You We're know, all secret agents. I had a feeling there was something different about you. It is your posture, your, your poise. Oh, yes. There mm. is no mistaking the bearing of a, a disciplined man. And uh, I should know. I was mm. in the army. You know, when I was your age, nice I army was fighting for my life 
in the African desert. How can I help you, Inspector? Inspector Mori, I prefer. The beginning and tell it just like it was. Did he was have the a briefcase? Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? Why, yes, he was. Clutched in his arms like a baby. That's that mine. To his victim. Oh, mm. what do you think was in it? Drugs? Stolen jewels? Research? I don't know. But the killer thought it was worth a man's life. <laughs> and nothing is worth that, monsieur. Okay, what about... Tell so... me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> he was a mean one, monsieur. He grabbed me in an arm lock. His face suddenly next to mine. His grip was like iron. But he did not know what he was up against. Oh no, he made a big mistake when he took on one of the desert hyenas. Yes, yes, a hyena. I get the picture. <laughs> Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Oh, well, it's worth a shot. Do you Stuck know the waitress me. at the cafe? So you don't want to hear about my experiences in the desert? I fought to make this country what it is today. I'm sure you did, but I'm a little short of time. Yes, yes we are. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? <laughs> you, you, you can't suspect her, ah, surely. No, just... Just answer the question, please. Yes, uh, I know her quite well, you could say. Uh, mm. She came to work at the cafe oh, uh, six, uh, seven months ago. I look forward all week to the relief she gives me when she visits. Really? So you'd miss her if she wasn't there? Okay. Oh, Who else would I find to cut my toenails? Oh, okay. I was thinking very else dirty-minded. Um, Take never a mind. look at this false nose. Ah, that looks like a clown's nose to me. Precisely. He must have dropped it in his panic. Well Unless he wanted you to find it. Why would oh. he want to do that? To put you off the scent. Mm, good point. Does this piece of material mean anything to you? Ah, that is the same cloth as the jacket I found. I'd recognize that pattern anywhere. Jacket. Now, Tell us more about, about the, the jacket. jacket you found. Do you have it here? No, monsieur. One of the sleeves was badly torn, so I sent it for repair. <laughs> A pity, because otherwise. It was a fine piece of quality tailoring. It had the tailor's name inside on the label. Where did you send the jacket? I gave it to an itinerant Romani seamstress. Just my luck. Was there uh, anything in the jacket pockets? Yes, that would be kind of nice. So. You know what I think? Do tell me. <laughs> he changed out of the clown suit and cunningly disguised himself as... An ordinary person. Hmm. Which most people would do. Looks like I'm up against a mastermind. <laughs> okay, anything else? What was else? the name on the label? Ah, it was a foreign name. Todrick, I think. Todrick! Did you get the address? There wasn't one, monsieur. Only a telephone number. Ah. Well, I don't expect you to remember a phone number you've only seen once. 74 98 0859. Nice! Shitting. That's his phone number? Yes, that's it. A little stupid number that I learned in the desert. I was Handy. taught the technique by a Tuareg shaman. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> it comes in handy <laughs> at the supermarket checkout. Uh, do I get a reward? Honesty, monsieur, is its own reward. Then I'm glad I do not rely on honesty to pay the bills. Good point. No. I have to be going. Thanks to your help, the citizens of Paris can sleep a little easier tonight. Raymond? Yeah. I was only doing my duty, monsieur. Good luck, Inspector. I hope you catch that killer soon. I'll let you out. Thank you. I hope you find your man, Inspector. So, so do I. I. Boom. I do too. I honestly do. Cure the music. Boy. Uh, um. 
try this member. Hello? Who is this? Hello? Hi. My Give name is George Stobart. You don't know me. Correct, Mr. Stobart. I don't. What can I do for you? Well, I'm trying to trace one of your customers. Could I maybe come over and talk to you? No. No. That's not possible. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, no. Forget it. Listen. All I want is a name. What are you talking about? Who are you working for? I guess you might say I'm acting in the interests of truth and justice. Ah, oh, thank God. I thought you were the police. There are innocent lives at stake, Mr. Todrick. Lives that you could save. No, no, wait for it, no. You're collecting for charity, yes? No, I'm not. All I want from you is information. Go on, I'm listening. Um. What do you know about the clown who bombed the Café de la Chandelle Vert? I don't have no idea nah, what yeah, you're talking about. I was about. waiting for that. You're I knew cool, that was going to happen. But I think you know more than you're saying. I don't know who you'll be, but sure I am. You don't know what you're talking about. I don't know if you're saying that to make me think you don't know what I mean, but... Oh, this is ridiculous. Oh, there's a person there. Quit playing games with me, Todrick. I tell you, I know nothing about no clown. What about... Do you know a guy called Plantar? No, I never heard of him. Shall I tell you what happened to Plantar? How he was killed in cold blood? I told Ooh. you, I never heard of Plantar. I expect Plantar's a family man, don't you? In their little apartment, Madame Plantar is cooking the supper, listening for the familiar sound of her husband's key in the door. It's Junior nice. is waiting for his daddy to come home oh, from for God's sake. He can't wait to show him the merit marks he earned in school today. <laughs> Only tonight, Jesus. Monsieur Plantar won't be coming home. You forgot Deep, the man. puppy, huh? huh? The faithful puppy dog, waiting for the sound of his master's voice. Well, maybe they don't have a dog. What do you think? I don't know, Plantar. I never heard of Plantar. None of this has anything to do with me. Did you know that one uh, of your customers was a part-time clown? If a guy feels happy with a funny nose and custard down his pants, what's the problem? <laughs> Thanks for nothing, Todrick. Okay, so the next thing we'll try. Uh, try. No, I don't have the whole number. So let's try Nico. Bonjour, couleur. Oh, she looks really oh, nice in this. Hi, it's George Stobart, the American at the cafe. Ah, oh, oui. Uh, you said to call if I could help. Have you any news for me? You bet. I met a witness who spoke to the clown. And I know where the killer gets his suits. No kidding. No. Hey, I'm impressed. You are? Well, it wasn't easy. Look, why don't you come here to my apartment? Fine. Where do you live? 361 Rue Jarry. Okay, Rue Jarry, I'll come right Rue Jarry. Diddly dee dee dee. Hooey. Let's go. Onward and forward, Mr. Stobart. Uh, Rougerie. The woman was doing something with a pair of needles that could be described as moving. She was a cheery old soul, the kind you'd walk across the street to avoid. George, that's not nice. Come on, man. She looks like Granny from Sylvester and Tweety. Oh, hi. <laughs> Bonjour, monsieur. Would Hello? you like me to foretell your future? Um, uh, no thanks. I'm very yeah. good, and it only takes a minute. Thanks all the same, but I'm not superstitious. Besides, if it only takes a minute, that's not much of a future to look forward to. Yeah, that is kind of true, I suppose. Uh, actually, I, I will. changed my mind. Will you tell my fortune? You're going on a long journey. Why? Wow. My, oh my. What a surprise. Can you tell me anything I don't already know? Ten francs, please, my dear. Ten francs? That's a yeah. ripoff. What? Please yourself. No, thanks. How does this fortune-telling routine work? If I knew that, I wouldn't be selling flowers for a living. <laughs> Haven't you ever wondered why you were blessed with the gift? Well... It's a bit like satellite television, I suppose. You pick up the channels, dear. Some of us dear. are born with a, a built-in receiver dish. 
I Why? just happen to be one of the lucky ones. Yeah. Can you really foretell the future? Only time will tell, monsieur. The strange thing is, mm. I can't seem to see myself in the future. Other people, I have no problem. But when you I can't try to know see too much about your own future, I guess. Nothing. That must be scary. Maybe. I figure it's a kind of natural safety mechanism. Either yeah. that, or I don't have a future. Creepy. Do you know a young woman called Nicole Collard? Yes, I do. She lives upstairs from me, in the apartment block across the street. The door isn't locked, but you'll need to give it a gentle nudge. It sticks, you see, because of the damp. The landlord and... said he'd fixed it before winter sets in. He's been saying that for three years. Not much of a good landlord then, is he? Are the flowers for sale? Oui, monsieur. Okay. I'll take a bunch of those white ones. I wouldn't do that if I was you. No? They are mm. lilies, monsieur. Some people associate them with death. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Thanks for telling me. What other flowers do you have? Dahlias. What do they signify? Insecurity. Hmm. <laughs> I don't want to give her the wrong idea about me. What about... What about the tall yellow ones? Those are iris. The flame of passion. And mm. the little yellow ones? Sensuality. Well, they're no use to me. I want to make an impression, not jump down her throat. How long <laughs> has Mademoiselle Collard lived here? A few months. She's in for a shock when the cold weather comes. Drafty windows, insufficient heating, it's a struggle to keep warm. The only reason <laughs> Sounds I like my stay house. <laughs> is because the rent is cheap. Your young lady, mm. she deserves better. Now all you need now is a, t a talking putty tat and a freaking talking bird, eh? I thought Mademoiselle Collard was a successful photographer. Not as successful as she makes out for all her fine clothes. Oh, I've heard her crying herself to sleep at night. That's oh, awful. Nico. Now, don't you let on that I've told you. She's proud, that one. Too proud, if you ask me. <laughs> See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will. She is an ominous one. <laughs> she just does look like the granny from Looney Tunes, doesn't Remembering she? Remembering the flower seller's advice, I push the door gently, just above the lock. Fluffin' smoke with that! He was right! <laughs> Sorry, that was very... Bonjour. I'm glad Hello. you could make it, monsieur. Please, call me George. Fine. I'm Nicole. Take a seat, George. I like those kind of windows, because I used to have one in my old, old flat. I used to have a bit like that. Just a... A bit you can sit in. And what have you been up to? I've been exploring the sewers beneath the cafe. I thought I could smell something bad. The clown hey. used the sewer to escape and to change out of his costume. I mm -hmm. guess he was in a hurry. He left his jacket behind. And? I got his tailor's phone number. What's more, I know where he hired the clown suit, too. You had better luck than I did. Luck, she said. Luck! Hard work, I'd call it. What happened? <laughs> I took my photographs to the editor, but he wasn't interested. Can you Ugh. believe it? He told me to drop the story. But you're not about to do that. Oh, no. I am going to find out what's behind these killings. You know what I think? <laughs> yeah. It's a conspiracy. Oh, everything's a conspiracy game, isn't it? three different countries have kept very quiet about the murders. The press don't connect them at all. They blame them on political, religious, or militant minority extremists. That covers just about everyone. Hmm, yeah. Uh... I found a piece of material near the cafe. It's his, by the way. When I showed it to the concierge, he recognized it right away. It's very distinctive, all right. Just wait until you see this. I developed the film I shot at the cafe. 
Here, George, it's an enlargement I made. Okay. Let's see it. Look what that guy's wearing. Checkered pants. The same material as I found in the sewer. That's right. This guy shouldn't be difficult to find. Oh, no? Take a close look at his left cheek. A scar in the shape of a horseshoe. Oh, Did he get kicked in the face? <laughs> uh, How come you enlarged this photograph of me? Because I noticed the guy behind you, of course. <laughs> Tell me more about the clown's previous victims. Oh, the first okay. was Arnaud Bellotta, the millionaire pharmaceutical baron. He made his okay. money from amphetamines in the post-war slimming and diet boom. Imagine it. Millions of housewives literally spitting their butts off. Was he killed for his money? No. He had no living relatives, and his fortune went to the orphanage where he grew up. The only witness in the case was his Filipino au pair. She swears he was led to his death by a snowman. <laughs> <laughs> a snowman? What about the clown's second victim? Jeez. Yamada, the controversial Japanese green politician. He inherited his fortune from his father's electrochemical consortium. He was committed to dismantling Japan's automobile industry. Okay. I can't see him gaining much support with a loony policy like that. Yamada was a man of vision. He was years ahead of his time. If you say so, how did he die? At the end, or oh, should I say... Flippers of a giant emperor penguin. I'm sorry, what? An emperor penguin. Am I just, is it just me or is anyone else getting a moment of Billy Madison in their mind? With Adam Sandler's movie, you know, the penguin when he's in the big freaking thing. I, I just picture that now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. A snowman, so, a penguin, penguin, and now a clown. Clown, yeah. You know, so. I hate to admit it, but this is scary. And I'll tell you what, I won't be accepting any invitations to costume parties. I don't blame you for being mm. scared. I am too. But this story could be my only chance of a big break. Or a premature death. Yeah, so... You speak very good English for a French girl. Thanks. You speak very good English from America. Boom. Good comeback. Tell me more about yourself. Oh, there is not much to tell. Well, how did you get into photography? I guess I owe that to my father. He bought my first camera. I was eight hmm. and my parents had just split up. Oh. Did you live with your father? Yes, my mother went off with her new boyfriend. I told huh, mine. That's nice. Papa was all I needed. Four years later, he died in a plane crash. Oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, it's all right. I don't mind talking about him. He was more like an older brother, really. Always joking and laughing. Papa always wanted I should study art. That's why I went to college. Did you learn about photography at college? Oh, God, no. I couldn't afford the materials. We were billed for everything we used. Paint, canvas, paper. Most of Jeez. my year turned to minimalism. It was cheaper. I used to go poaching in the park for squirrel hair. The only time <laughs> I wasn't hungry was the term I did printing. I used to eat the potatoes. You're making fun of me, aren't you? Oh, no. <laughs> Do you have a boyfriend? That's none of your business. Sorry, I, well, I shouldn't have. No, um, should let's see. Sure. Thanks. Let's try calling that guy again. Uh... Let's see. Hello? Who is oh, this? Oh, who's this? Mr. Todrick? Oh, it's you again. Oh, oh no. no. It's not gobbledygook. Did you make a suit for a man with a scar on his face? A scar in the shape of a crescent moon? Ooh. Maybe. Maybe not. Tell me where I can find him and I'll leave you alone. And if I don't, I won't okay. leave you alone. I can't <laughs> tell you anything unless you give me his name. Do you know where I can find the guy? I told you. Without a name. Okay. Thanks for nothing. Okay, so... I guess... I found this false... This is where I found the news. <coughs> it has La Risée du Monde printed inside it. The laughing stock of the world. 
It's a costume <laughs> shop near the Gare Saint Lazare. I'll check it out. Maybe the owner remembers who hired the clown costume. Lush. Why don't you put it on, Josh? No way am I wearing this. I'd look really stupid. Besides, you might have had a cold. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going let's back go and do that then. Where? Well, I guess I could visit. Good idea. Okay. It's time to go. What was it? The Oiseau du Monde? Is that the right place? Yeah, I'm guessing that's where we're meant to go. Ah, oh, there we go. 